that was a really beautiful song. Now that actually um, is an original song that you wrote. What is the, um, well, of course, um, what's the inspiration of that song? Oh, man. There's so many with this one. It's just, uh, I wanted to write a song that just set, says it in the, um, the chorus, the, the Lord of all heaven and earth. You know? We thank you, Lord, for what you're worth. And uh, there's one part that says, you know, we lift these hands to you not because he asks us to, because we want to. And so I just wanted to write a song that showing God that, you know, I know how big you are, and I'm not lifting these hands because I'm told to, or that's how it's supposed to look, but because I want to. Well, you know, um, the song is very telling because the words are Lord of all, right? And that's exactly what he is to us. But I'm assuming that's that something that brought you to that realization with the American. Well, um, I have been an addict for seven years and uh, addicted to opiates. And, oh, wow. Uh, opiates. Yeah, well, you were. you were a nurse. Yes, there you go. It's Which is not <laughs> uncommon. Is, yeah, oh, it's totally not uncommon. And um, through the seven years, I've been to two rehabs. I've been to three detoxes. I was actually in a mental work for four nights because it was the only thing that, got, that they had available for something that didn't have insurance. And, and so, I mean, I've had my DUI. I've had these just horrible things that I've been through. And, and um, you know, all these things, all these doctors, all these things that try to get me off drugs, all these things I've been through, you know, uh, trying to get off the detox because the withdrawals are horrible. Um, there was only one thing that did it, and it, it was, uh, I believe with all my heart, it was the power of the blood and stuff. Jesus Christ. And so it was, uh, you know, so I was a Christian, and then I became an addict. You know, and normally so you've been a Christian longer than yeah. that. Yeah, oh yeah. So let me ask you this, because most people don't know this, and they don't know how easy it is for somebody in the medical oh, yeah. to be addicted to the Did you have an injury, or did Nothing. you just... It just, it was, it, 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 it was it's like I had it, yeah, it was available. Never took it to get high. All of a sudden, just realized I loved it. And it's just like Oxycontin? Yeah, oh yeah. Like it in Oxycontin, mm -hmm. it did. Yeah, and it, and it grabbed, it, it, and it's a, it was a huge stronghold. And, and from what you hear on TV nowadays, it's it's a huge, it's huge out there right now. Especially for young so, people. Yeah, and Especially for abs people. absolutely. So it's one of those things that I never thought in this lifetime I would say the word rehab. I never thought I would say detox. I never thought, I always used to think, they're an alcoholic, just stop drinking. Like, what's the, I don't understand it. Why can't they just stop until God brought me through a lot of that stuff and a lot of junk. And he allowed me to go through it for sure because he absolutely wouldn't be as real to me as he is now if I didn't go through seven years, you know, uh, of just storming. It was storming. So, so your relationship with God certainly wasn't quite as deep um, when you first accepted Christ because it sounds like, how long were you a Christian before you started? I was a veteran for two years. So it was still kind of new. Very new, yeah. yeah. Very new. But just, yeah, just didn't have, you know, didn't have fellowship, didn't have the right people, didn't, you know, just didn't make it real. Kind of did it because I thought that's what I was supposed to do at the time, so. Well, and, and it's interesting because, Dan, you have, you said that you didn't understand your true close relationship with God until you were out in, in high school. Is that right? Yeah, I was a freshman in high school. I, uh, I accepted the Lord when I was six. You know, I went to church with my family and uh, went to Sunday school. And, uh, it wasn't until uh, high school that the Lord really opened my eyes that it was so important to be concerned about your relationship with Him because He's got so many awesome things for just you and just you uniquely. And the Lord gave music to me and, and I've I've just gone kind of all with it and worshiping the Lord and trying my best to give it back to Him in all different kinds of ways. Well, it sounds like you had fellowship and you had a lot. Of, I mean, what Mike was saying, he was missing, um, which can lead you astray. You had fellowship and you and Corey have known each other for a while as well. Um, and so, Corey, I, I don't even have a chance to talk too much, so I'm going to give you a chance for the first time, kind of um, share. Is yours similar to, to either one of these guys? Yeah, it's pretty similar to Dan's. Um, I grew up in, it was supposed to be a Christian household. My parents were divorced uh, when I was five years old. My mother was a very godly woman, and my father said he was, but he really wasn't. So it caused some kind of conflict between me. I thought that I could just play the role of a Christian, and I did that throughout my whole life. And when I was in high school, right after I graduated, I really realized that I wasn't living for the Lord. And I, I did so all my friends. Throughout the years, I I always looked at my calling as a, as a gift, and I was using it to entertain uh, high schoolers in, in my 
it's really cool to see how he's taking different backgrounds together and being, and again, you guys actually did qualify yourselves as artists, and, and you were in a band, as you said before earlier, uh, and you did your own separate projects, and along comes Mike, and the only reason why you don't qualify yourself as an artist really is because you feel that in your heart, um, I, I feel in my heart there's, I believe I'm a professional worshiper for the Lord, you know, there's, an artist, you know, they, they have to have a certain uniqueness, in it, you know, and I just believe God's given me just the voice to bring people to, you know, to a place of, you know, just a presence, you know, with God, and so, um, it, it's just not my calling to maybe do a big concert or something, it's more of, you know, I love going to churches, it doesn't matter the size, but just going to churches and meeting God's people for worship, so. Anymore. I mean, obviously, this is something that you feel led to do is to go from church to church, and if the church feels that they are led to have you there, and you can come and inspire and encourage their ministries, that you guys are willing to do that. Sure, absolutely. Uh, now, it's, it's really interesting because you also help with the clubs. Do you find that people of the younger generation relate to you, even though your music also speaks very worship-related, oh, yeah. and yet? Your, your look is all your image. You know, just kind of how you brand yourself is a little bit more edgier. I, well, I love it because it breaks that stereotype. I think when we first walk into church and they can see I'm full of tattoos and tat has tattoos and dance hair and, and earrings and all this stuff. But I think it breaks that image because once you start to worship, they, it gets past that and it gets to see, oh wow, you know, that it, they, these guys can worship. Like we worship, oh, okay, you know, it kind of breaks up here. I love it. it. Yeah, I love it because it's, God says that He sees the heart, you know, and, and it's the world that looks at the outside, but it's God that sees the heart. As Christians, being Christ-like, that's what we strive to be. So we just go and you know, with our tattoos, and we and we want to be respectful of churches. So we'll cover them up at times, and you know, we want to make sure we're not, you know, we want them to hear what God's doing, not what we're trying to portray. And, you know, we're not trying to make a statement by no means. You know, we're just trying to bring who Jesus is and, and to bring people to that level. So. Well, we would love to be able to um, just open up, you know, our online audience to ask you any questions or comments about what you guys are doing. Um, and you can always email us at Jesus Church at Gmail.com. Um, we have a website, and that's where you can find out about us and find out about our events and things like that. So so we'll, we'll be right back, but before we go, make sure you guys are talking to Toby online at crosswalktv.com. And Toby, make sure you go ahead and start texting some of those questions because I'd love to be able to hear what everybody has to ask. Um, and Rick, are you okay if they start asking a little bit about maybe their own experiences and maybe yeah. Bring it. Okay. Or, <laughs> bring it. Bring it. Bring <laughs> it. So uh, bring it on just as Dan is in. And uh, we'll be right back live from Canaan Cafe. And uh, Kelly. You're serving up some drinks over there? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we'll be looking forward to seeing you guys come over to Canon Cafe, or we'll take your questions online. This is Vivi, live from Canon Cafe, CRTV. We'll see you back here with Mike Clark.